Why are you doing this? For Umbrella? Money? <coughs> What's in it for you, huh? In Resident Evil Gaiden, Barry Burton and Leon are sent to investigate a viral outbreak in a passenger ship called the Starlight. After dealing with countless infected passengers, they find a survivor who happens to be followed by a new type of bioweapon similar to Mr. X, only this tyrant can actually shapeshift into looking like an ordinary human. So it can disguise in plain sight, and the only way to tell if it's the tyrant itself is if its blood is exposed, which is green. Leon, Barry, and even Lucia ended up fighting it to the very end. The ship would eventually get destroyed and all three of them would manage to escape before the ship went down. But when the camera zooms in on Leon's neck, we see that Leon has a cut. And he has green blood. And some dry as lips. That's probably another way to find out if this B.O.W. is in disguise. But anyways, this ending tells us that this wasn't Leon at the end of the game and the creature likely killed him to escape with the others giving us the most shocking ending for a Resident Evil game. And that was the first time we got an RE game where Leon likely died at the end of the main story. In 2012, we got Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, a what-if story game revolving around the events of Resident Evil 2 and 3. And in this game, you play as a squad that hunts down Leon and Claire. <laughs> then you get to choose whether you want to eliminate them at the end, so... That makes it another game where Leon dies in the main story of the game. Command, the cop is dead. Good. Now finish your mission and bring us the girl. Copy that. You're coming with us. Claire, I don't want to go. Please. No. Sorry, we've got orders. So those were two games where Leon dies in the main story. Now, let's talk about the movies. The Paul Wes Anderson films. The first one did not include Leon, but when this movie came out, Paul wasn't planning on making five sequels, and I think we can all say that the character Matt was meant to be like a reference to Leon because who else in the franchise was in the middle of a zombie outbreak on the first day working as an officer of Raccoon City? So he may not have been Leon, but at the time, we all had every reason to believe that it was him. And we all know what happened to Matt in the first and second film. I still remember how me and a bunch of buddies were discussing whether it was Leon, but they decided to give him a different name just because none of the characters in the movie were characters from the games. Some of them kind of acted like them. They had sort of the same uh, motivations, basically, I guess you could say. But with Matt, it was kind of a combination between Leon and Chris because he had a sister and his sister dies in the first movie, so it's like, okay, so that couldn't be a reference to Claire, could it? I don't know, they weren't planning on making this a movie series, so you never know. Then Resident Evil Apocalypse comes out. I analyzed the hell out of that movie in a separate video, same goes for the first film, and realized that the newspaper that Jill kept in her room mentioned something very interesting. Again, like with the first film, Paul wasn't planning on making all these sequels to his Resident Evil movies, so he killed off Leon, but it was off-screen and only mentioned in a newspaper article shown in uh, Jill's bedroom, I guess? You would have to pause the movie just so you could read the article for yourself. It doesn't really explain much except for the fact that Jill and Leon were apparently partners and she got him killed, according to the newspaper article. They've never, ever interacted in the games before, so it's like, huh, this is so weird to read. Not to mention, uh, coincidentally, we're finally going to see Jill and Leon interacting for the first time in the next CG flick called Resident Evil Death Island. In 2012, same year that Operation Raccoon City came out, Paul released his next cash grab, Resident Evil Retribution. And here, he decided to include Leon, even though he already killed him off in the second flick. There was no explanation as to how he survived and did not return alive with Jill as mentioned in the newspaper article. And I guess it didn't matter that Paul brought him back because another movie sequel later, he kills him off again! And off screen again! In Resident Evil The Final Chapter, the movie starts off with Leon already dead. No mention of how it happened, except for on the novelization of the movie. 
It mentions that Leon was absorbed by a creature exclusive to the novel known as the Melangi? Melangi? Melang? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon Pueblo is a movie where I encouraged Leon's character to croak. If logic made sense and he wasn't covered in plot armor, he would have died when a liquor was close to him and he was the only one making a lot of noise. Yet the liquor attacks Brian Irons. Or when he finds a rocket launcher and decides to use it in close quarters with other main survivors trapped in the same crowded area with the monster. And yet no one but the monster dies after firing that rocket launcher. It's gotta be the only Leon where just about everyone was hoping that he would not make it by the end of the movie. Oh man, but since we're talking about Leon, I think we should mention the tragic deaths of both the original Leon voice actor, Paul Haddad, who died of throat cancer in 2020 at the age of 56, and Brad Renfo, who acted as Leon in the commercial for Biohazard 2, and unfortunately he died of a heroin overdose in 2008 at the age of 25. Rest in peace to two badass portrayers of Leon S. Kennedy. I noticed that just about everyone who meets Leon ends up dying seconds after interacting with him. I mean, is he cursed? Does he belong in Death Clock? Or is Resident Evil Gaiden secretly canon and Leon died years ago in the Starlight Ocean and that shape-shifting tyrant was in disguise all along making sure that people around him kept dying? Wouldn't that be a shocker? Oh yeah, he's also the only character in the series where the developers made a wallpaper of Leon losing his head to the Chainsaw Villager. This was the way Resident Evil 4 was advertised to us. Were they ballsy for doing this? But by seeing this wallpaper all over the place at the time, it makes it seem like this is something that happens to Leon in the story, rather than just another death animation, similar to the wallpaper of the nemesis holding Brad's corpse as the advertisement for that game. I don't know, I always got that impression. There's just so many times we keep seeing this main protagonist get capped, and I thought I was only seeing this every time he died in different playthroughs in games like Resident Evil 2 and 4. Especially for since it includes tons of alternate death animations for Leon alone. And I can only guess how many more of those will be seen for him in this Resi 4 remake. That's it for the video. Thank you all for taking the time to watch this video, and if you truly enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content from this jabroni. I cover lore videos, facts, movies, and game reviews, all based on my favorite franchises such as Resident Evil, The King of Fighters, Mortal Kombat, Celebrity Deathmatch, The Mask, Dragon Ball, The Terminator, TMNT, and more. I'd like to give a very special thanks to all my Patreon supporters. This video is for you and I hope you like seeing your name at the end credits of this video. And if you too would like to see your name at the end of a new vid, be sure to join my Patreon where you also get to receive exclusive videos and updates such as new art panels for my Resident Evil Outbreak comic that I'm working on. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video and remember to have an awesome day.